Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me today. I've been away um, in terms of these Woodblock Wednesdays for the last couple weeks. I've been, it's been a very busy a time here. Uh, we just launched a new exhibition on the website, so if you haven't had a chance, please visit the website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. The exhibition features an assortment of really wonderful um, Western artists um, working in Asia. The exhibition is called Western Western Sales, Eastern Skies, Western Artists Working in Asia. And we have a wonderful ass assortment of prints by artists from a, mostly um, from Europe with some Americans. Um, and uh, the, the prints are, are wonderful. They're woodblock prints. There are some of them, are, a couple are lithos and uh, there's some etchings. It's a wonderful collection of prints um, that display the various uh, influences Western artists um, sort of received from Asia while they were there and how they work through those influences. So we have some great prints in exhibition. So if you haven't had a chance, I invite you to, to have a look. And so today's um, Woodblock Wednesday is dedicated to uh, a print and a print artist that I thought I may have discussed in the past, but I, I looked in my archive and I, I so I, I didn't. And so it's a terrible oversight. Uh, and so I'm happy to discuss the works uh, or the work of Paul Jacquelet. Um, he was a Frenchman who uh, moved to uh, Japan and produced woodblock prints um, in the traditional sort of ukiyo-e or shinhanga tradition, where he actually designed the the, the prints, but then had um, wonderful artisans carving the blocks and printing the the designs. And so, um, well, without further ado, let's just go to the table, have a look at the print, and we can discuss Jacqueline further. So the, the print that I'll be discussing today is considered one of Jacquelet's masterpieces. And so before we get into the print, let me give you Paul Jacquelet's dates. He was born in 1896 and passed away in 1960. And he's credited with producing some of the most technically um, difficult prints um, in the woodblock print medium. He hired the best artisans um, available to him in Japan, and um, they, pr they produced some, some amazing and startling designs with some, just it, the, the, the effects that he was able to achieve is just um, astounding, and we'll, we'll get into that. But this particular print depicts a beautiful, very fashionable Parisian. The, the print um, is titled at the bottom, um, Un Parisien, um, a, a Parisian. So he's just basically um, showing what a typical, you know, very fashionable woman um, from Paris may look like um, in the 30s. This print is in fact done in 1934. And so it's at the height of that fashion um, for the 30s. And um, here, you know, I'll just point out some of the more subtle and more important effects that Paul Jacquelet was able to achieve. Here we see a veil that covers part of her face. Now the veil creates kind of a shadow, so you could kind you, you certainly see through the veil, but it's a different color. And if, if I zoom in, you could see that the actual veil has been carved out. You could see the design here at the bottom. And then the, the, the wrinkles in the, in the veil here. And I'm going to zoom in. You could, you could also see the lines, the, the cross hatching on the veil itself. That is astounding to be able to carve out this portion of the block with the veil being so, I mean, intricate. You could see the veil that goes across the face. That is woodblock carving at its best. 
to be able to achieve this effect, uh, this reminds me actually of a morning here by Katundo where there's a mosquito net in the background and that carving is also a tour de force. But it, in this case, it's it's uh, sort of a smaller element in the design, but but very beautiful, very powerful. It really adds to the fashion that she's she's wearing. So the 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 printing on this, the carving and printing is astounding. The the other effects here that I I like to point out is this wonderful sort of a fox stole she's wearing. Uh, the the print is printed with a really light touch. You can see the brown in the center, and then it, it, it kind of fades out in a really beautiful way. That is Bokashi, uh, the technique of pr printing with a darker color and moves out to the lighter version of that color. It's a beautiful gradation of color. It adds a lot of texture to the fur. You could almost kind of get a sense of how warm the, the stole is. And, um, you know, let me zoom in so you could see. Now, the background is kind of a, a neutral sort of bluish, greenish background, which only um, helps to accentuate the figure uh, moving forward to the, the viewer. And of course that face and, and all of the elements in the, in the composition of her clothing, particularly that veil, just stand out all that much more. Now I wanna show you the verso. This is the, the back of the print, nice and clean. This is a very early edition. It is the kanji seal edition. And so for those collectors out there, Paul Jacquelet issued prints in various uh, editions. And um, the, this is the earliest version where you have the, the, the kanji or the Japanese number edition. And um, I believe that was in, done in an edition of 250. And, um, and then there's another edition where it, there is a PJ seal. So it's a PJ uh, that's done in kind of an elaborate um, um, sort of seal, but you could read it, it's in Western script. And there is a, uh, a, a Western numbered edition as well. Now, the interesting thing about Jacques is that he would have prints printed when they were ordered. He wouldn't print these um, impressions and stack them up in, in his work studio just waiting to sell them. They were far more technically complicated than your just general Shinhanga print. So the work that went to a Jacquele, there was a lot more work than let's say a Hasui. So where Watanabe would have Hasui prints, you know, printed and stacked up in, as an, in, in his inventory, Jacques Lai didn't undo that. And so the research, you know, a lot of us scholars that are, have done some research into Jacques Lai have pointed out that the editions of, of the of particular impressions weren't actually finished. And he may not have finished the entire edition of the kanji, um, edition, and, and he didn't finish the Western number edition, most likely. And the reason we also know this is that these prints don't come up for sale all that often. So if 200 or so impressions of, of this kanji version would made, you would see it come up for sale on a regular basis, you know, and you don't see these come up for sale all that much. So the point is, uh, these impressions are actually much more rare than, than these um, editions would suggest, which is interesting. And so for the connoisseur, it's good to know, you know, what's out there and, um, you know, and what editions they are. And so if someone would ask me which version would, would I would want, um, you would always want to get the earliest edition. And the, the kanji seal edition is, is basically that edition. So um, that, that's how it goes with that. So I'll show you 
again, this, this seal. And right here is the hand applied number for this particular impression, but everything else is the same. Now in Jacquelet's body of work, he produced some designs that are really notable, and this is one of them. He did also a, a bat series um, a prints, which everyone calls them the bat series because the seals he used had a bat in them, and they're very elaborate. They're very, very elaborate. Um, in some designs, he used more than 60 or 70 blocks. I've, I've heard that some, some people have estimated that in some designs, he may have used nearly 100 blocks on some designs. You know, I've never had one of those designs in front of me encountered the numbers or the type of embellishments, but I would imagine it's up there. It's quite a lot. It's, again, much more complicated than your average run-of-the-mill Shinhanga design um, that was produced in, in large quantities. And so one can understand why Jacquelet um, would not want to, you know, have a stack of these in his studio um, waiting for them to, to sell because he had to pay his artisans um, for the production of these prints. So I, ju I just want to just want to get get a good angle so that all of you could see the the wonderful printing. Now the the subject's face, her her sort of um, her look towards the viewer has a kind of a very enticing, almost bewitching quality uh, to the to her look to the overall design, and um, you know I I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, I think that Jacquelet, you know, being obviously European, he's drawing upon a European design, but he's in clever in how he's mixing the cultures that he's participating in. Of course, Jacques is Frenchman, but being in Japan and living very much like a, a Japanese man, he would wear a kimono every day, he, he was fluent in Japanese, he lived in Japan for a large portion of his life, he also understood the culture of Japan and the for those of you who who have studied or been to Japan and and have uh, come across the Inari shrine or foxes or story of foxes, they're they're considered sort of supernatural um, animals that have a connection um, to the spirit world. And some foxes are not really foxes; they can transform. Um, some people would call them demons, some people would call them, you know, spirits and other things. But the point is the, the fox is a supernatural being or, or, or a type of fox is a supernatural being, being that can tr transform itself into a person and also sort of get into adventures, um, lure people into um, provocative situations and some stories, uh, you know, go on to say that the, the, the foxes actually draw out the energy of the victims so that they can live on. Um, and so it depends on the particular story you're referring to, but Jacques Allais adding this sort of fox stole, stole around her, um, around the figure and giving her this sort of provocative, kind of strong, um, potent, sort of alluring look kind of suggests that a little bit. And, and he also added her hair is basically the color of the, the fur. And so that only connects the fur as 
being sort of part of her in some ways, kind of an extension of her. And so, I mean, maybe this is a little bit more of an Elias interpretation of the print than, than the average, you know, sort of understanding. But I would argue that the, the Fox material or the Fox um, you know, part of her, it's part of her, obviously it's part of her outfit, but it's connected also to a, a larger narrative that he maybe is weaving. And, um, he's, he's being very playful with this, but she does, at least to my eye, has, the, she does kind of conjure up the stories of foxes that are in Japan. It's such a gorgeous design, and it's 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 one of those designs you can look at um, for a long period of time and find wonderful uh, new qualities in the printing and the design, um, and, th and that's what Jacquelet is really known for. And so, uh, before I go, I wanted to point out some books that are out on Jacquelet. I believe I have all of these books available for sale. They may be listed in my bookstore. That may not be. I'm I'm planning on putting up another. Well, I bought a library recently, so I have another 500 books or so to add to my bookstore. But if, and if there are any books that you're interested in acquiring, uh, shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to assist you with that as well. Uh, but these are the, the primary Jacquelet references that I recommend. Uh, th this is his catalog, Raisonné. It's been the one that most collectors uh, have used. But this is one that's come out uh, in the last five years or so, maybe eight years. And it's it's an exhibition catalog um, for Jacquelet uh, in Japan. And it's essentially the same thing, except most of the, all of the designs actually in here are in color. Plus there's some watercolors illustrated. So technically this book's a bit better than this book, though this book is, is a little larger and the, the information is still very useful. Um, you might find this book uh, for less than this book because obviously it's from Japan and they weren't produced in the same quantities. And the last book I, I'll point out, it's actually a harder to find book. I do have it for sale. And it's basically a book on Jacquelet's watercolors. And, um, you know, I'll just flip through this really quick. Um, the book has not yet made it to my website, but I do have it for sale. And so you could kind of... I'm just just flipping through these at random, and you could see uh, Jacquelet was also um, really interested in traveling, and he 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 traveled in the southeast um, and in the Pacific, um, you know, the islands there, and so he. He basically documented a lot of the indigenous cultures that that he encountered. Now, I want to point out that they're 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 done in the eyes of Jacquelet. So one, I don't want to get into trouble and say that Jacquelet do documented them in a way that a historian would. He he did not. He he accentuated certain things he found exotic. And he, he made them into, into designs that he would want to produce as artwork. So, you know, I wanted to just point that out, that it's not a true historical document, but the watercolors themselves are really interesting, nonetheless. So I highly recommend this book, as is this book. And if you can't find those, there's always this book that will do the job. So I'm going to zoom in one last time so you can look at the print and enjoy it. I'll zoom in one last time so you could see the amazing and intricate carving of the veil over the, um, the woman's 
face. You could, I'm gonna zoom in as close as I can and you will be able to see the lines that were actually carved into the block to be able to see how delicate that veil looks over the, the woman's face. It's, it's astounding, again. You know, if you're just joining us, I'm, I'm encouraging you to, to start the video over and you will, where you'll hear my discussion about the te technical mastery of the artisans that were involved producing Jacquelet prints. But this is why this is one of Jacquelet's most important and most sought after prints. I mean, the technical mastery in conjunction with such an alluring and provocative design is, is basically, you know, what, what you would want. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me on Woodblock Wednesday. I, as I mentioned, I was uh, away, at least from doing Woodblock Wednesdays, the last couple of weeks, but I'm back. The exhibition on my site is up, so I'm a, I'm a little less busy, um, but I want to thank all of you uh, for your support. The exhibition's gone really, really well, but there's plenty of things on there that um, are for sale, as well as... They're there for you to enjoy, and there's a lot of research and a lot of write-ups that were produced to give the prints a context. And so it's not just a selling opportunity. Um, you know, I always look at these exhibitions as a way to introduce these prints to a larger public that may not have seen these before. So feel free to, to go onto the site and have a look and read uh, about the prints. And if you have any questions, feel free to direct message me. Um, even if it's not, I, I mean, I, I don't mind if you just ask me a question about uh, the, how the prints are produced or what this means or what, even if you're not interested in buying it. I'm more than happy. Um, that's what dealers are there uh, to do, to help educate uh, those who are interested in, in prints and to further their education. Um, and I'm certainly happy to do that. So thank you again for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you next week on our next installment of Woodblock Wednesday. So have a look at my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. Um, and until then, I'll see you next week. Thank you.